let's talk about the swag in general. So I'm looking as we're doing this flicks, I'm looking at this press conference. It appears for grambling that Joseph as we're recording this on Monday morning will be the next head coach of Grambling. Now, uh, Kyle T. Mosley of Sports Illustrated HBC Legends reported before the press conference that it seemed as if there was some alumni that were having some grumblings because Mickey Joseph had some situations in regard to domestic violence. Now, for what we know, those charges were cleared. He wasn't, you know, co convicted or committed of any wrongdoing. Uh, but we know that the Grambling alumni, they've seen greatness with Eddie Robinson. They've seen greatness with Doug Williams. They've seen greatness with Melvin Spears and Rod Broadway. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, so they, they, they've seen greatness. Like, like they saw greatness from the G, the, from the Devontae Kincaid G-men before FAMU that Grambling won the, the celebration ball in 2016. You know what I'm saying? So they've seen, Roderick Fobbs, they've seen that low, low success. So it appears that Joseph, former Nebraska quarterback, served as Nebraska interim coach, coached at Langston University in NAIA, had very successful tenure down there. Then he has a coaching stints at Alcorn and, and other places in the SWAC. Now he's at Grambling. So let's talk about that real quick. So what do you think about this hire? Yeah, uh, good hire. It's a good hire. Uh, you know, the message DV charges were dropped. Uh, it's not a thing. Uh, he was an interim coach at Nebraska for a time. And previous to that, which I'm most interested in, he was a coach at LSU. He was a wide receivers coach for Jamar Jefferson. I mean, uh, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, uh, DJ Chark, a lot of those guys, Terrence Marshall, a lot of guys in the NFL balling on Sundays. He was coaching, right? He was the guy that was there with Joe Burrow and Chase, and they went on that run in 2019. So, to me, this guy right here might be your answer, Grambling, right? Grambling wants a, this quick fix. They want to be able to figure things out, get back into winning ways. Well, this is another very good recruiter, just like Hugh Jackson. This is another guy that knows the offense very good, just like Hugh Jackson. It's some of the same qualities from, as we see from Hugh. So, it's kind of funny that they bring this guy in instead of giving Hugh an extra year. But whatever, you know, it's their prerogative. And I do think that Grambling, though, will begin to trend up fast. Right, I think when it comes to recruiting, this guy has been on the Power Five level for a couple of years. He knows what caliber players that he's going to need to win in the SWAC conference. So I think that he's going to be able to attract those type of guys while he's in Louisiana. I'm hopeful that he keeps together this offensive staff uh, led by Coach Lee Hole down there so, so he can keep his quarterback, keep everything else intact as far as the roster. I think that's what's most important for Coach Joseph. It's going to be roster management. Coach Hugh Jackson brought a lot of talented guys down to Grambling, but it goes all for nothing if everybody hits the portal because Coach Joseph comes in as head coach. Do you think that Miles Crowley stays now that Joseph is here? Because is this because like I, to me, looking at it from a storyline standpoint, because I didn't play football. Well, I, I played football. That's a whole different conversation. It, it was it was it was a while back. Okay, but like I, for me. I'm more of a basketball guy, of course. I didn't play basketball either. I played basketball. I was better at basketball. But when it comes to storylines, I'm I'm real big on that because I, I know the game, but I don't know the game to the level of someone that's played it. So from the media journalism standpoint, I focus more so on the stories being told often. And for me, when you look at the story of this former Nebraska quarterback that is not new to HBC life, he's not new to the SWAC, he has that backing of being in the conference in that way. And then he served as Nebraska's coach and coached them to three wins. Like the interim coach for, before they, they, they brought in uh, the latest coach, Matt Rule. So to, to me, I think that this is a splash hire to me. I don't think this is just the guy where it's like, who is this guy? I think this is a splash hire. It's not like Deion Sanders, Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, celebrity splash hire. But I think to me, this is a splash hire. But what do you think about the recruits like Miles Carlin? What do you think about the recruits like some of the other guys? I mean, I think it was a guy that was like a real big, I think, defensive tackle. He was like six foot five defensive tackle that immediately when they fired Hugh Jackson, he went in the transfer portal. Do you think those guys consider maybe coming back? Uh, I, I think they think about it. Guys like Floyd Chalk, who hit the portal, have been receiving uh, FBS officers. I mean, he has offers from San Jose State right now. But I think that Grambling can rival that. You know, I think that Grambling and what they offer, they can rival what a San Jose State might offer. And even the fact that Floyd Chalk has been playing so well at Grambling might lead him to coming back. 
So uh, I think the fact that Miles Crawley was on the committee to select this new coach helps a lot because part of that transparency that, that a lot of players don't see, they'll get from Miles Crawley to where Miles Crawley goes and sits and knows who the candidates are. So now he goes back to the dorms or back to the apartments, goes talks to everybody about who the candidates are, who do you think we should bring in. And I think that was probably the most crucial part of the selection process. I do know that Coach Joseph has been building the staff for quite some time now. It's been around – eight to nine days since I've heard that Coach Joseph has been building his staff. So I think that this decision may have already been made. They've been getting the numbers right and the money together. But I think that because the decision was already made, it was already relayed to the team uh, at least a week from now, right, before now, to the point where now the team already understands who's going to be there. They understand if they want to hop in the portal or not. They've already made their decisions. And now the public, us, we get to hear about what's coming new. But the team – may have already heard about this about seven days ago. And I really want to say this. I think that's a great takeaway. I really hope Grambling gives them time because I totally agree with you on what you said on last week. I wish they gave Hugh Jackson more time because I think that you can't rush a rebuild. And Grambling right now is a rebuilt job. It's one of the most storied programs in HBC football. And I just really think folks forget that they've had a few really good coaches after Eddie Robinson. Because Doug Williams immediately came in and they were still successful. And that was a big story at that time. Then you had Melvin Spears that came in. He had Bruce Eugene, I think, sort of that final year because Bruce Eugene got injured. He had Bruce Eugene that final year and they went and won the SWAC championship. Then you go in, you get Rod Broadway, who we know he's a legend, like I said. Then you get Broderick Fobbs because Doug Williams comes back and it wasn't that great. I did an interview with a player from that, from that team that it didn't really work out all that well with Doug Williams coming back. But then you go back and then, then you get Broderick Fobbs, who I think got a very raw deal from them. Like, I just really think that they shouldn't have fired him. I think they should have allowed him to continue to build upon the success that he's had to try to work his way out of what was going on. Because all he needed was another recruiting class to maybe shake things up. I don't think they really should have let him go. And then you bring in Hugh Jackson, who I think was a good you know, hire, a splash hire, NFL guy with notoriety, and you don't let him cook. If you bring in Mickey Joseph, an FBS guy that has FBS, literal FBS head coaching experience as an interim at Nebraska, he sort of has a name. He can recruit in Louisiana. Like you said, he was on that legendary 2019 LSU squad with Joe Burrow, Jameer Chase, and Justin Jefferson, and the crew. So he's seen some things. He can impart some stories. He might can bring maybe like 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 Justin Jefferson down to Grambling. Like if, if they if they play, you know, like you know, they're in the NFC, they play the Saints, might pull up. You know what I'm saying? Like you never know. You know what I'm saying? So like, I just think you gotta give Tim time. Because you gave Eddie Robinson time when Eddie Robinson, and, and I know this was years ago. Well, I think any of us were really born for real. But like back in the day, Eddie Robinson didn't just come out and just start winning. He had one win his first season. And then, of course, the war happened because he had a couple of more winning seasons. And then you go from there, and then it's more sustained success. So I think you have to give your guys time to build something. But I will say this before we move on and we close out the show. I think that Mickey Jones is going to build a winner pretty quickly. I honestly really believe that because I think that he's going to have some guys that are probably already ready. It's like he has coaching staff. I think he's going to have some guys. But real quick, Flix, if Eric Dooley is indeed on this coaching staff, because folks are saying that Eric Dooley might be the offensive coordinator, what do you think about that? And he, is, is that true? Because you got the sources. Is that true? And if he was the <laughs> offensive coordinator, what do you think about that? Yeah, well – uh, if he is, then I think a lot of guys might hop in the portal. There's there's a very negative attitude towards Coach Dooley uh, as far as, like, players in the swag. <laughs> so uh, if he, they do decide, they bring in Coach Eric Dooley, and they say, Coach Lee Ho, you got to go, I think we might end up seeing one of those mass exits from, from Grambling. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he was on this staff, though, because I do think something that is important about Coach Joseph coming back is that he's going to bring a lot of guys back around the program that was around the program when he was there. And Dooley being one of those guys, he probably wouldn't be afraid to bring one of his friends back around and keep them close to the to the program. I think part of uh, where Hugh Jackson may have misstepped was the fact that he didn't, didn't seem like he had the relationships in or around the program that kept him up on what was going on. It seemed more like – he was a kid on the playground with no super super uh, vision at all, right? You go out there, you do whatever, just bring the recruits in. 
just uh, bring the jerseys in, just uh, pack out the stands for for the spring game. But it didn't seem like he really had his hand on the post at Grambling. It almost seemed like he was working against him at times. I think Coach Joseph, trying to stay closer to the Grambling and understand what's up with the G, he's going to bring in as many guys as he did when he was a part of the Grambling coaching staff as an assistant coach. So I think it might be a possibility. But as an offensive coordinator, I think it's a low possibility. I feel it. So, yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. So we're hearing some rumblings that that the alumni – being upset might have, you know, stirred things up, but you know, I'm I'm glad to see that there is some atonement, and and we see that he, of course, as we're doing this recording right now, he's currently doing his press conference that is airing on HBCU Plus, right? 